Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. You're home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. Got a brand new series for you today that we're gonna do. It's called The Good Glyph Guides, or Triple G for short, and I'm going to be doing it with our fellow content creator, Teacher. Welcome in, Teacher. I'm gonna put his channel info down in the pinned comment below, so make sure you go check him out if you haven't already. Today, we're going to be talking about what glyphs sets primary secondaries we think you should be putting on the rivendell team the reason we're doing the rivendell team it's obviously the arena meta it's obviously the raid meta a lot of people just got rivendell the second event of elrond and we think that's probably the best place to start with describing what glyphs we think would be good to go on these characters so in terms of characters that we're going to be discussing today it's going to be elrond elrahir arwen Lomian, Naramiri, because you do end up using Naramiri in most circumstances in the raid, and then we'll leave Eladin for last. So with that, why don't we get started on Elrond, and uh, welcome to the first episode. Teacher, how are you? Thank you very much. This is going to be really interesting, and yeah, it's gonna. I'm really looking forward to it, and as you said, let's start off with Lord Elrond. And for the primaries, I would say... For the uh, glyph four, uh, four, five, and six, you would probably look at health for him because he uh, heals, and you would really want that. So you have your healer being able to survive in both arena, where you do see a lot, but also in raids, especially for those who are gonna be maybe pushing a difficulty for then that health and that extra healing will come in handy for him do you think he needs some focus and resistance though so the reason i'm saying that is one you want a little bit of focus probably to land make sure his two turn slow lands but also a little bit of resistance that way his leadership ability is able to extend those boons right because as we all are aware um, you don't get those boons extended if you have Banes on the team, so you probably want to avoid that on at least some of the members of your Rivendell squad. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. And as for focus or resistance, I would probably lean towards focus more on Elrond specifically, so he actually can land that two turns slow, whereas resistance, that could be good for a Chapter 3 if he is the Marked 1. But overall, having him heal, like there's some of the boons that you, it's really nice when they get extended, but you mostly just want them on for his special two. So focus for that extra sl uh, percentage chance for the slow will come more in handy. So probably one or two in uh, HP. If we go with a gear eight or nine, then we're looking at close to 3k. And then some focus, which will bring him above 3,000. Like, it will bring him almost to 3,300, which is really high. So I think that would be a good way. Yeah, I, and it is worth mentioning that they do get fortitude on the start of their turns. And that probably does help. So you, you may not need the resistance. I think one of the issues, though, is, yes, in chapters maybe 1 and 3 of the raid, especially... Maybe chapter four too, as you're pushing into higher difficulties, you want to be able to maintain that um, sort of resistance to get full effect of his leadership ability. But one interesting thing, I did a little back of the envelope calculation, and at gear tier 10, if you take into consideration like what stats you would get at a glyph level 10, it's about, for Elrond, it's about an additional 10% health for every single health primary stat, which is a big deal because... That's just additional healing he's going to give out. Plus, you get this multiplier inside. Once you enter combat, you're going to get this additional multiplier from his leadership. And so it's kind of just health on health on health. And that's going to make sure that your team, when he does use his special two, is uh, really going from zero to 100, basically, with his heals. Yeah. And also, one thing that uh, some people might not... Uh think about but it is actually really really good that is his passive which also scales off his max health so that in turn could actually be really really good so we would be looking at with light squad getting plus 10 percent and one or two heal on his primaries we are probably looking at around a 45k hp elron yeah i that's a good point i hadn't actually considered the passive and so i you know 
you could you could do right for this mainly when we're talking about primary stats here you don't have choices for one two three so we're mainly talking about four five and six right and yeah you could do one health one focus one resistance but i because so much of elrond's stuff scales off of health yeah i'm I'm kind of tempted to either just go all three health or maybe maybe one focus but maybe you don't even need that if you get you know focus on the secondaries but before we talk about secondaries let's talk about um what set you're gonna put on elrond what are you thinking i'm actually thinking uh and this is both for arena and for the raids I'm actually thinking the best set for Lord Elrond is actually a Lembus set. So you get the uh, the stamina back. As we know, it is gain one stamina that is random, but it prioritizes an ability without actually uh, the full stamina. So maybe there's some uh, manipulation that we can do to put it into his Wrath of Rivendell, the special two slow. So you would be able to get that off more frequently and that would be great for AoE in chapter one and basically all the four chapters, it would be great. And also you slow down the opponent in your arena where we know that speed is king. Right, yeah, so this would give you a turn one wave with Elrond because it would fill up his only ability that he doesn't have start on cooldown with, right? Which is his wave. And then as soon as you use your wave, it would actually give you one stamina back because you're... Vilya's light would still be full and it's prioritizing abilities that don't have that. I think that's I think that's pretty useful. I'm gonna throw another one at you, which I think is Last Stand. I do think Last Stand is probably useful in an Elrond setting, just because he gets to go again, and you're not too worried about somebody taking him from, you know above, let's say, 26% health, and then killing him right away because he usually has those stacks of unbreakables. So I actually think Last Stand works very well for him in that case because he's not going to get one shot. So you're pretty much always going to have this trigger, in which case you're going to be able to dispel Banes on him, which might be preventing him from using his leadership ability, and then gaining one stamina. And you're hoping that that one stamina does end up going into the special one, his heal, so that you can kind of bring him back to life. I think this is a okay option i'm leaning i'm I'm kind of with you on lembus being his probably primary set though well i actually agree there that last stand is also my secondary option for a major set and it is also uh, the same uh, reasoning plus it will get you your uh, various light faster off cooldown let's say it ha he has just used it without reviving anyone then you are actually already have that cooldown um if someone gets him down and that could be really really good so especially in like a defensive like if you're putting him on defense right and so the person attacking your rivendell team is doing the right thing which is basically targeting elrond first this is kind of like it's almost like an extra unbreakable but an unbreakable that gives you 100 percent turn meter and one stamina so i I think it's a pretty good option, both in PvP and raids. It, it's definitely a good secondary option, something I'm going to be messing around with. What are you thinking for sec... Oh, we got to talk about uh, minor sets, obviously, as well. I wasn't even thinking about that. For me, there's basically only one that I'm really yeah. thinking about, and that is actually Raider. Oh. I actually uh, were considering Raider... Otherwise, I would probably go armor piercer. Like it's, it would be one of those. Why? Why one of those over something like life stealer or bloodlust? Uh, the reason why I would go for them is because bloodlust. You need to kill enemies, which is pretty much only chapter three where you want him to do it. Chapter one, you want the bomber to uh, kill the orcs, and uh, we do see a lot of. That little bit extra damage to a uh, to a Balrog or a Cave Troll, and normally they get a lot of health. So getting that extra percent damage would probably what I would go with. Also because he has so much healing in his kit with regeneration, his passive, his uh, special one. So it would either be a toss up between Raider or Armor Piercer, and I would probably lean towards Raider. Okay. 
In that case, I actually think I would lean towards Armor Piercer because this is so. This has a condition attached to it, and it's two percent more damage. But yeah, it's it's attached to this fifty percent health condition, and I feel like this yeah. is I I I really want this on characters that I want to finish the job, you know. Um, whereas Armor Piercer, especially in a raid setting, or even against probably you know uh, enemy Eladins or enemy tanks, might do a little bit more damage. I do think Bloodlust is interesting, and I've kind of thinking about it have defaulted as like my ma like my default minor set that I do want to put on characters is Bloodlust, just because you know speed is king, and getting more turns and turn meter in an action economy game is always going to be good. But yeah, maybe maybe he just doesn't ever get the opportunity compared to definitely other people on the team. Um, interesting, but not Life Stealer. No, not lifesteal. I wouldn't go there um, because of him being able to get health so many other ways, and yeah. especially all the regions. Yeah, and it's two percent lifesteal, and so I, the way I've kind of interpreted this working is like it's two percent of your damage that you do. But if you look at the difference between, you know, HP and damage, it's two percent of this is not going to help you in that. You know? Yeah. Um. Okay. So in terms of secondaries. We've got these 10 options, and I think what we're going to do for basically most of these videos, um, but definitely for this video, we're just going to kind of assume that speed is probably a good secondary that you want on all characters, just for exactly for the reasons that I just mentioned, right? And um, so we're not going to include that in a lot of the discussions of the secondaries because we think that's probably a given. Yeah, that's um, also because there's a high chance of rolling it and it will be useful everywhere, so. Yep, so for me, I actually think it's, you're just kind of going with the same things that we thought maybe for primary stats. So health, focus, resistance. Um, maybe this is where you can make up some of that resistance if you need it, just getting that extra bit of percentages from your secondaries. Um, then we, that way you don't have to have a primary one and you can do a little bit of focus, do a little bit of health. Again, this is all of his kits basically based around his max health. That's going to be important. But other than that, I'm not sure I see anything super useful to him. I actually want to throw one in there that I have been thinking about, and that is actually block chance. Okay. Because that is a flat reduction of the damage over a resistance. Right. Of course, resistance does help, but we do see there's a lot of AOE abilities everywhere. So, block, uh, higher block chance could help him stay alive when he gets hit by those. So, what percentage block chance do you think this would make a decent sort of um, difference for him staying alive? I would say at least 20%. So, one in five. Below that, I think it's a really coin flip. It still is at 20%, but at 20%, you should see, at least in raids, where we do see a lot of AoE in multiple scenarios, then you could see a way to survive some stuff there. Yeah. I Yeah. Mm, I think that's interesting. I'm, I'm maybe not as convinced, because that would require definitely rolling extra secondaries into block chance. And I, I'm I'm not sure. I think you probably you might get more utility out of rolling just straight into health. But yeah, that is definitely an is, option. Yeah, health is the one that I listed as the most vital. Yeah, yeah I would easily. say along with speed, of course, because again, him just being that high uh, HP person will just benefit the entire team. Right. Exactly. Okay, let's transition to talking about Elra here. Elra here here. If we're going to talk about primary stats, I am kind of of the opinion that you should just go damage, damage, damage all the way across the board. And so I did a little calculation at G10 for Elra here, and it is each primary uh, damage glyph that you put on him at G10, which would be four total in my scenario, gives you an extra 10%. So he would have an extra 40% damage from his glyphs at G10 uh, glyphs, which I think... Uh, He's going to shred more than he normally does. He's That's a lot of damage. Yeah, I think so too. And um, I actually had him listed as 1 HP in the beginning. But considering how much we want to put into um, Elrond, 
who can then heal him uh, faster and more of his health than yeah also just for everything and his retaliation like you you want as much damage as possible right and just kind of thinking maybe even like like two steps ahead if you kind of expect that let's say you're going you're doing some sort of mirror match let's say in pvp in the arena right and you know that their Elrond's probably loaded up a bunch of health, and so his healing is also going to be pretty crazy. You probably know that their Eladin is going to be super tanky, right? Um, yeah. So I think you need to kind of account for that as well and make sure that he can overcome all of that extra stuff that the other characters who have the sustainability and uh, tankiness are putting out. Yeah, agreed. And that's, as we both say then, as much damage as possible so you can match them. Right. What are you thinking for primary, or sorry, for uh, sets? For sets, it was actually really difficult because yeah. last uh, withering doesn't really work for the elves, and that is probably what you would want on your main damage dealer. So I actually opted into vitality, and okay. the reason why I I went for vitality is because there is a lot of AOE everywhere, so you get some regen on him. And then I, for a minor set, I actually combined it with the armor piercer. Okay, doing the armor piercer, 2% armor piercing. Okay, um, something I did think about was, would he benefit from Lembus? And, you know, that would basically give him a turn one special two Elven Vengeance, his, like, big attack. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's actually the right move because currently the setup is, right, you do his special one, which gets exposed out for two turns and might on him for one turn so that next time if he can, you know, attack the same target and they still have exposed, he's got might, they've got exposed, and he does his big attack, which I think is really what they were, you know, attempting to design with Elra here. If you give him Lemba's set, he gets turn one Elven Vengeance. He uses turn one Elven Vengeance, probably. And, oh. Uh, yeah, he does turn one Elven Vengeance, gets use the, uses that first turn, right? Then gets an extra stamina into Elven Vengeance, which puts it on a shorter cooldown. But I just don't know if that's going to be as effective as doing his normal setup of special one, special two. So I also was thinking maybe um, doing last stand here. Because, like you said, there is a lot of AoE, and he is under stealth, and that's kind of one of the ways that you end up damaging him to some degree, right? And yeah. I think this gives him an extra turn to maybe put out some additional damage before he kicks the bucket. Yeah, I was also considering that, like, I would say it's Vitality or Last Stand, hands down, for him. Because if we go ahead and put a Lembus on, I think especially on uh, defensive or people who might be busy and they go on auto, I think we will see really a diminished damage output for Elro here if he doesn't have his might on. Anyone who's tried to use Elven Vengeance without might will see it's not really that great. So last stand, clearing some banes and getting your turn meter on, that will be great. And that also gives you that shorter cooldown for Deadly Grace. So it's either that or Vitality, and I think for Elber here, it will really depend on what we see in the meta. Yeah, I agree. So I'm hesitant. One, I, I'm not convinced how good Vitality is at the moment, but two, I, I don't, I'm not convinced specifically with the Rivendell squad because of how much regeneration is going out already from Arwen and from uh, Elrond. You know, there are definitely situations where he um, is going to have three stacks of regeneration. It is on every critical hit, and so maybe that's kind of the saving grace there. Yeah, yeah because sure. we do also see uh, Ironhide on defense who can take out some buffs, uh, some boons, and we see it uh, many different places. So I think that's why maybe Vitality, also yeah. if you do get hit by a crit from the Balrog, honestly, then you do get a stack of Vitality that could help you navigate a little bit. Yeah, actually, I think you've kind of convinced me a little bit. Just uh, And additionally, like you get that extra buff. He gets extra damage from that buff because of Elrond's leadership. Um, that can get extended as well when he gets... And he's going to get 40. I, th I think maybe Vitality actually does make sense because he is not going to be having... He's not going to be receiving regeneration as much as you probably 
think, just because I, it's probably not, he's not going to be the character that's most wounded and getting regeneration from Arwen and Elrond um, as frequently as maybe somebody like Elodin will be. Yeah, so AoE will actually help him being able to survive. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> We got, a, we got a subscriber. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of minor sets? You said um, armor piercer. Yeah, and the reason why I went armor piercer is two big targets. That's the cave troll and it's the balrog. That's basically the um, same thing. And also then if you go into PvP where you have to hit a target, that will have shield wall on most likely. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm just. Two percent is such a low value for me, considering I think what people are going to be stacking on tanks, especially somebody like Eladin. I'm. Yeah, I think my default here is just to go bloodlust, and then you know, in chapters one or chapter three, you can get sort of additional turns on Helra Elra here to do whatever you need to do, and maybe it's clear. Uh, unbreakables for Eladin, maybe it's to get stacks on, or maybe it's to get people down below 50% health, but also, I think it has some use in Chapter 2 as well, because you can start to clear the adds on the side of the Cave Troll when he's toppled and not worry too much about kind of missing out on making sure you get that damage, especially in the second topple. If you manage to get a slow on him, you could still maybe take out the adds. Yeah. One thing I actually want to throw into the mix is... Um... Actually, Life Stealer with all his passive, if it procs off there, then you actually do end up getting quite a lot of health back. So, Vitality plus Life Stealer, then you could actually look at a fairly decent amount of health back onto you. I think that's a good shout, actually, as well. Um, just from the Retaliates alone, yeah, I think him and um, and Lomian actually have a pretty good case for doing for doing Life Steal, and he's got a multi hit attack, and so you also expect that that is going to give you two percent per per hit there as well. I actually didn't even think of that for his uh, special two. Right. Yeah, so it'd be four times 2% of whatever the damage is, which I think, yeah, if you can heal yourself up quite a bit from that, that that's uh, pretty pretty good. Um, let's talk about secondaries. Let's get the secondaries table up here. So I think you and I actually have differing opinions on this. I think you should definitely be going for damage uh, maybe we don't have... No, I I, I want to do damage, crit da crit chance, and crit damage. Is that what you have? I I would say I would value crit chance the highest. Interesting. Uh, be because then I could have a lot of crit damage from him because the damage is flat, but getting that extra crit, uh, I feel will give more damage overall. So... There is a case to be made for damage, but I would definitely say crit chance over crit damage. So the way I think it's supposed to work, at least my understanding, and correct me if you think it's supposed to be different here, is you basically have a 10% base sort of crit chance. Eladin hands out his, uh, deadly with his, what, special... Special two, it is special his one, special, right? Uh, his special, special one. one, and you get 30%. 30% crit chance right there, so... Basically, the way I think it's supposed to work is you get 10. If you get deadly on them, that makes it 40%. And then any additional crit chance you get there, it's basically additive in that way, right? So you yeah. could, with deadly on, I think reasonably reach very, you know, above 50, above even maybe 70% crit chance with deadly on. I would say with deadly on and also L run then extending, I would say... Go for something, assume you have the deadly on, then I would say 60 to 70% would be a good place to land. And then I would actually just, as we mentioned, have some speed. And then in an ideal world, for me, it would be damage. Yeah, just because that's also going to, of course, increase the amount of crit damage you do. Yeah, and... The reason why I would value damage over crit damage is because in the situations where you don't crit, then you still get the damage increase. Yep. Yep. I agree. And it is, you know, I haven't gone through sort of any napkin math to convince myself one way or the other, but 
crits in this game are just like 30% of your, you know, 130% of your normal damage, which I think is actually different than a lot of other games where it's, you know, 150% or 200% or 250%, where maybe, you know, crit damage makes a lot more sense because when you do crit, you want to just make sure you're getting the most out of it. Here, it's not the case. So yes, critting is good and does a lot more damage, but it's it's not so different than damage that maybe it's still just kind of on par that you should like with increasing your damage stat is a, is a better option, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I feel this uh, like some games have really, really high crit damage where I feel here it's more balanced, honestly. Okay. So. Um, you want to talk about Arwen? Yeah, um, I think she's probably the one who surprised people the most in the raids. So for her on a primary, I would actually go damage onto her because she does a lot more damage than some people expect, especially with her special one. And she is really fast. So I would actually do at least two damage on her for the glyphs, maybe even three. Yeah, I have her as three damage as well. Here at gear tier 10, she has uh, 3,225 damage, right? Let's look at Elra here at She's gear tier 10. Has more than him. She has more damage than Elra here. So I think it also makes sense to put a lot of damage on her. Um, she hits, she hits signi like, yeah, surprisingly hard. She's already pretty fast. The, the other one I might put on her is, again, just maybe some resistance just to make sure that she's not getting Banes on her and taking advantage of Elrond's leadership. But I honestly might just put three times damage on her and call it a day because the fortitude and also, does help. if you scroll down a little bit, Swag, then you would actually spot something. She also gets the 10% there. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm, I think I'm just going to do three, three times damage. Yeah. She's going to hit so hard. And... Her special one with that 20% per boon remove, like, you just get two turns right in a row. Yep. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Arwen. I know it doesn't seem like she does as much damage. I think that's because her special two doesn't actually have any sort of damaging abilities, unlike Elra here, who also has his retaliate, right? But I think when she does hit, she hits really hard. And, um, yeah, I Arwen... People have been sleeping on Arwen for a long time, actually. Since since they've announced her, people have been, I don't know, she doesn't seem that good. And I think she's absolutely a necessary part of the Rivendell squad. Actually, before we uh, talk a little bit further about her set, just quickly compare her stats to Elro here, like the armor, the focus, the resistance. It's really interesting when people take a look at it. So because she actually does better than Elro here in every single category. Yeah, so she has more armor for sure. And health, and what about focus and resistance? Yep, focus and resistance. Uh, not speed, though. Yeah, not speed, but considering the fact that she actually beats him in focus and resistance, that was surprising for me to some extent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially, especially damage. I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't even apply. I guess the focus and resistance values are pretty much always the same. And they probably just hiked up her resistance because she's a support character. But I was going to say, she doesn't need the focus because she's not applying any Banes. Yeah. So let's talk about primary, or let's talk about sets. I think one of the things that I'm interested in putting on her is Last Stand. Um, because she does end up taking so many turns, especially with her special, um, her special one, right? I think this yeah. kind of... She gets 100% turn meter, but she really has the opportunity, especially with that gained one stamina, to basically get two turns in a row. And I think yeah. that makes her a good candidate for, for last stand. Um, she does... You can one-hit Arwen, but I do feel like she... I mean, she has more armor than Elra here, so uh, I still think this is a decent option for her. I actually agree here, um, because I actually has last stand on her as well. She also gets focused a lot in chapter three, so yeah. it is really, really good. Um, there are some situations where she can even be low health, but due to immunity, and then you could get another turn, you get some, and you get some uh, dispelling off if she has a Bane on her, so it's really, really good. Um, Lempus would actually also be one, so you could actually get that Deadly Earnest, almost immediately like right you could almost do back to back but 
I'm more of a fan of Last Stand than I am of Lempus, though Lempus does have a pretty good argument for both the special one, if you need to use it quickly in succession, and then also getting her her, her special two for the cleanse uh, faster off cooldown. So there's right. arguments to be made for both, but I'm leaning towards Last Stand. Yeah. The, the reason I'm not uh, leaning towards Lembus is because of this part right here. On wave, start, gain one stamina. I feel like that's, you know, about a third or half of what the Lemba set does. And that won't have any effect on her because she does start with, at least at max. Yeah, she starts full with she stamina, full. so it's wasted. Right. If you don't have it above level 5 on her special 2, maybe, but just upgrade it to level 5, I guess. And then yeah. that becomes not as useful. So that's my hesitation with Lemba's there. Um, I, I kind of think because she does hit so hard, I still think life stealer is an option here. I'm actually totally on board. I have only one option for her, and that's life stealer. Yeah, I, I still think bloodlust could work though. Again, because you know, imagine, imagine she can use her special special one, but she doesn't have as many boons. Um. So she's not going to get a 100% turn meter. If she manages to still kill somebody with it, then she still will get that 100% turn meter. How much, you know, how many people you're killing with Arwen? Probably not that many. I don't know. I just really like the 30% turn meter option. It yeah. is nice, but that's also where we have to consider, like, Arena, there is basically only five. And for Chapter 1, it's almost a no-go. It's basically only Chapter 3 where there's a lot of killing, so... Yeah, that's true. Um, definitely not an arena sort of... This is definitely more of a PvE rather than a PvP type set, I would say. So, Life Stealer, Life Stealer probably is a good... Just a good shout. Um, As for her secondary, I am thinking... Well, speed is a given, and then I'm leaning towards HP or damage. Yep. Could be resistance, but probably damage to get her just hit that much harder yeah that's that's where i'm with you uh, damage health and then resistance i think are pretty good priorities um, and then yes obviously the speed is a given one okay let's talk about lomian what do you got for lomian lomian was pretty interesting because he is he's turning out for me a little bit of a disappointment overall yeah. <laughs> uh, especially once uh, we figured out how to do uh, the Balrog with Balin instead, like, that was, okay, that was the big selling point for Lomin, and then he just got put to the side. I don't even use him at the moment. So I actually have him at some damage, but I actually have him as 1 HP because he has so low HP. He oh, has below 30k, so I would say yeah. 2 damage and 1 health. Yeah, he's so squishy, and I think that's because he can put Nimble on himself. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I agree. I mean, he doesn't... There's no need for focus. His armor is already in the trash. Yeah, it's it's as low as Elrahir, I believe. Oh, no, even Elrahir has higher armor than Lomian. I agree. Maybe some health. Maybe, but maybe you just turn him into the glass cannon he's meant to be. And you just, again, do all the damage you can. And uh, what is his... His damage is not even that good either. Right? His damage is worse than Elrahir's. His health is worse than Elrahir's. And Arwen's by extension. So yeah. he, I think he does need the extra help, and I might just make him into the glass cannon he was meant to be, where he can be killed by a breeze, a strong breeze, but he hits like a truck. Yeah, that's a that's a solid argument to be made, for sure. And as you said, it's probably due to him having, if he were to level up his special 2 for a free turn cooldown, combined with how fast he is, Yeah. then you get the nimble. And also, those who have leveled him, like 70% counter attack chance is pretty good so yeah damage would probably make the most sense overall glass cannon get hit by some aoe do some retaliation and die and then come back to life right exactly and i actually think that him being able to put nimble on himself plus him getting nimble from arwen when you're using him in the squad i actually don't think he needs the resistance as much just because he has other ways to sort of deal with it so for his uh, set i'm actually thinking last stand for him Okay. Also, because he is 
that squishy, so getting some extra turn, that could mean another nimble. So let's say he gets nimble and then he gets surviving one to two turns due to Elro Elrond healing him. Then the last stand gets him go again, then you can get another nimble on, you can clear the banes and yeah, then you have some regeneration, like you're you're cleansed, everything, and then you could go into your special one again for some boons on him. Yep, totally agree. Um I think that's a good good idea. I think for minor sets, I actually where I want to put him is I still think I think Life Stealer is a good option here. And something I maybe want to Yes, maybe last stand is okay, but you know he might actually have make the case for three life stealer, where you get six percent and then you're getting six percent back on all of his multi hits, which I believe are okay, so his, his special two isn't a multi hit, but he'll get life steal back when he counterattacks, when you know, five times when he does his special one, and then two times when he does his basic. I think that's a pretty decent way to keep himself alive. Yeah, uh, I agree on that. Like, there is a case to be made for him to just say get some minor, get some minor sets on him. Like, you could even combine it if you wanted. But yeah, like, just just go with the life stealer. Let's talk about. Well, secondary, I think, is also a given. Yeah. Go damage. What about crit? Well, there is. Uh, I would say probably more crit, uh, crit damage than crit chance actually here. Because if uh, his special one is working, that this attack gets 10% uh, plus crit per boon. Right. And if it's for all fives, doesn't feel that way sometimes. But if it is, or if it then gets fixed to that, then there is a really big argument to be made for crit damage. Yeah, yeah. so we were actually talking a little bit about this before we started recording. And I've expressed this a number of times. I know a number of other people have, but... It sometimes feel like this plus 10% crit chance per boon on self only really applies to his first attack in the multi-hit. That's the way it seems to me. I, I you know, I, that's all anecdotal, of course, but if it's working as intended, then yeah, I, I agree. Crit damage is pretty crazy to include there, but he does, you know, the, the, the places that you do end up using him are, you know, mainly, I, I would say, chapter two, um... People use Legolas in there as well, but I actually like using Legolas kind of as his own team. If you have Lomian built up, I do think if this is the way you're using him is to do crits on the cave troll, maybe even, yeah, maybe you just want to focus on getting as much crit chance as possible, and then he does his job, basically. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. So a character that we're going to talk about because basically she gets used in almost every raid chapter with the Rivendell squad is Nera Miri. Um, I mean, she's just incredible. She's very, very good. And I think mostly similar to Elrond, but with probably a few differences. So I still think you're probably going to want to just go all health here. She actually has a higher heal percentage, 18 instead of 15 for her heal. Elrond has 15% of his character's max health, and then she has 18. Obviously, the 1,000 flat health is completely useless, especially once we get glyphs, right? I think getting this to go off uh, and do as much good as possible is a really, really uh, kind of just the way you want to go with her. Yeah, I totally agree. I would also say HP all the way on her. And if we just were to do quick, let's say we have the first glyph and then we have uh, four, five, and six with health. Uh, let's say a gear nine or a gear eight, then we're looking at between 10 to 12k additional health on her. Then we're talking 40,000 health and then 18%. Then that's a lot of health that you're getting on her and that could be good everywhere. So yeah, exactly. All the way. Yeah, so she actually, with her current health pool at gear 10 with a level 10 glyph, she gets about 12% per health primary. So if you have four health primaries, uh, which would be slots one, four, five, and six. By the way, um, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but shout, shout out to Hayes and Jay Randall for making this graphic with these on here. That way um, we can easily see what we're talking about here. So appreciate that. But if you put four health primaries on here, right, that ends up 48% extra health. That's massive. 
That is so massive, and considering how free-to-play friendly she is, that's also why we included her, like the five elves to unlock uh, Elrond. So yeah, she was just a natural inclusion. Right, and then of course, under Rivendell or under Elrond's leadership, she's going to get that additional plus ten percent max health, and so you're just kind of stacking health on health on health, and um, yeah, it's just gonna she's just gonna be so good. What are you thinking for? I keep clicking. I can't remember where all my tabs are. What are you thinking for uh, major sets here? Uh, this was actually a really tough one for me. Yep. I think I would basically go last stand just to make sure that she doesn't die. So when she does drop below 25, she could heal. She could do some cleansing. Uh, but it was really difficult. I think last stand is a good option. I think Vitality is an okay option as well. I don't think she gets as many regenerations as other members of the Rivendell squad. Yeah. Um, either because she's under stealth or... Um, actually, I think some of the regeneration abilities only apply to Rivendell members, but I could be wrong there. So I think that's a, another option. But yeah, Last Stand, especially if you have these four health primaries, if you get Last Stand, you get that one stamina, it goes into her special two, her heal, or even if it's a special one and you're able to do some amount of cleansing, then I think that basically gives her, essentially, a, you know, it's an unbreakable. And speaking of her special one, I would say, of course, health is actually really good. I would, if I could make a choice, then I would actually say as much speed as possible on her, because that just helps overall. If I had to do a more spread out, I would say speed, HP, resistance, block. But if I could make a choice, as much speed as possible because it helps with everything. Yeah, so I agree. Health, speed, resist. You said block, and I said armor. And... Oh, yeah. The thing is, unfortunately, we don't really understand or we don't really know for sure how armor mitigates damage. What is her armor? 1,000. Basically. It's, so it's actually okay. It's a little bit less than Arwen's. What about Elrond? And a little bit less than Elrond's. But it's got a, it's got some in there. I, I wouldn't be mad if she got armor. Thing is, like, again, if you're giving her block chance, she has zero to start. So I just don't I just don't know at what point the block chance percentage is going to overtake putting armor on her, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Th that's pretty easy. Let's talk about the helicopter man himself, Elodin. I would call him Mr. MVP. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 accurate. What are you thinking actually, for primaries? Well, primaries, I was actually thinking um, health, but then it, I got the idea to say, why not also consider resistance? Because a resistance is 500 at... Um, or could even be higher, it's almost 600 if you do get him gear 10. That is mostly for people who uh, pay, but if you stack that, you could actually get very, very high, and that could help him many different locations. So he keeps extending the boons on him from Elrond, so, and he's still feeling quite tanky already. So I want to say resistance, but I might just fall back to HP because... That is just so much HP on him. Yeah, so wh why HP over something like armor? HP, I would say, is due to him then also being healed more from Elrond, so it's more this synergy. I feel his armor is okay, honestly, at the moment. But also, as you said, we don't know how armor works, with uh, how the calculation works. So for me, when... Considering that, I feel health is more safe uh, as an option or resistance. And here I'm mainly thinking for chapter three or chapter four, resisting all those debuffs. Yeah, I think definitely putting one resistance on him is going to make a big difference for sure. Especially at gear tier 10, I think this is probably when this happens, or above gear eight. Uh, yeah. They split the focus and resistance, actually, and he gets more resistance because that's what he needs. So he has more health than Elrond, right? And when I calculate it for Elrond, he's got about 5k more health, 6k more health. So each health primary is going to be doing less than 10%, uh, adding additional... It's going to be adding less than 10% to his current health. 
So I was actually thinking of putting a bunch of armor on him because, at least uh, the way the stats work for him, putting th each armor is about 15% additional armor that he would get per primary. So if you have four total from three, four through six, so three through six, then that's about what? Um, what's four times 15? It's very obviously 60. 60. And yes, yeah, so that's an additional 60% armor. And this is why I think it's actually important that we at some point figure out exactly how armor works because there's probably diminishing returns to how much armor you're putting on a character. And uh, I don't know if putting an additional 60% armor on him is going to... I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It seems like it would still be pretty good if it could basically turn any sort of damage to be, you know, just super reduced. Yeah. That's where I'm probably leaning towards resistance because we do know there's a lot of exposed armor out there and just being able to swat that away, especially from Elra here in a mirror match, the higher resistance means the less likely chance of them landing that uh, exposed armor. Yeah. Okay, you want to hear my crazy idea, though, for Elodin? Oh, go with it. So let's look at his damage. 2896. Elra here is maybe like uh, 200 to 300 more damage. Yeah, I'm thinking, basically. what if we just put damage, 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 and that way, especially if you put on something like, if you put on something like a three times bloodlust set, right, and you're able to use his special two a bunch, which actually does pretty decent damage, um, and it's just going to keep getting reset, right? Reset, re 220%. Reset, reset, reset. You can essentially keep going and keep using his helicopter move and just clearing the field um, pretty handily, I would say. I think that would be especially useful in some version of the raid if you can do that amount of damage to make it work, you know? Yeah, I was actually uh, thinking about this earlier today, and that was kind of like an idea I had for difficulty four. Right. Actually, uh, if you went with uh, Bloodlust, but I would actually say just go one Bloodlust if he could take out two enemies a turn. That is 60% turn meter he gets back. Right. And then you could combine it with maybe a last stand to get him being able to survive when they do have that massive speed increase. And then you could actually then start the helicopter over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still a theory, so. Yeah, it is still a theory. It's something I definitely want to try out for sure is being able to yeah. put that stuff on him. But you make a good point in that if he is able to take out multiple enemies with his AoE, then yes, you don't need more than one Bloodlust set because you are already getting extra 30% turn meter based on how many he does, right? How many he kills. Otherwise, he's also another one that you could actually make a good argument for three minor sets, Bloodlust, Lifesteal, and a Shield Wall. Yeah. I think characters that are going to be either doing lots of multi-hit attacks or similar doing AoEs all the time are going to benefit pretty greatly from just any sort of lifesteal. But he is a yeah. case for shield wall for sure. Um, just 9% less damage. So not armor, not some sort of mitigation or block, just 9% less damage. If you combine yeah. that with a bunch of armor already on him, then... Yeah, I think he's going to be unkillable, especially if Elrond is able to keep taking turns and healing him up. All right, what do you think for secondaries for Elodin? Honestly, I mentioned this a lot, but I think Block could be interesting because how many provokes he has, so he will take the hits. So here there's an actual case to be made for blocking. I agree. I think that's good. Um, armor, again with its usual caveats that we just discussed here. But if you're going to go this damage route, I also think damage and obviously health are good ones. I think speed makes sense for Elodin as well because he's putting up provokes and not taunts. Um, so you don't, yeah. you're not worried about him losing his taunt. You're worried about, you know, him staying alive. But speed yeah. plus damage percent might be incredible if he's got four damage primary glyphs. Um, yeah. That's basically all we have for Rivendell for today. Let us know if you all like these sorts of uh, formats that we're doing. I think Teacher and I are interested in kind of fleshing these out for a number of different teams that we both have interest in and have built up on our uh, accounts. 
Are there any last words you want to leave us with, teacher? Thank you so much for having me on. This was really interesting and very nice to get uh, your take on the lifts as well. And overall, yeah, pretty, pretty uh, same-minded. So that was uh, great. And I'm looking forward to doing uh, a different squad for the future. Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us again. His channel will be linked down below in the pinned comments, so make sure you go check him out if you've not subscribed to him already, which would be surprising. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy.